tell you.
lives. Make yourself real to them. May the hands, your hands get on earth. And, uh, the disaster relief organizations from here in town and other places as they go and minister and work in those places. Lord, I know they're taking your word with them as well. So, Father, we pray that even though this devastation was, was terrible, Lord, that you'd be glorified in it by lives being changed and someone coming to know you as the Lord and Savior. Father, we pray now as we enter this time of worship that our hearts and our minds would be focused on you. And, Lord, that you'd be the center of all attention today. Just fill this place with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And may we worship you afresh and anew. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, church. Fellowship as you wait to make your back in the seats. We're going to sing some Christmas songs and not so Christmas songs today. We hope you'll join us as we sing today. So won't you stand this morning and let's give God some glory. Let's stand and sing together. I mean, technically, isn't every Christian song your Christmas song? There you go. You're right. Yeah.
And that's not a fire, as we say, does he? But a far. That means a long way away, okay? They came from another country to get to the presence of Jesus, just to worship him. They made a great effort to get there. I'm going to read our theme verses, They're not where I told you to turn, but this is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into his house, they saw the young child and Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The worship that these wise men gave to Jesus is the focus of the series we began. It's the theme verses of our series. We started this series last week called Exceeding Great Joy. And last week we looked at Mary's song. She was just giving God praise and glory because she had the opportunity to be the mother of the Son of God. And we looked at her song last week. And today as we continue, we're going to take a look here in Luke chapter 2 at the song of Simeon. And we'll see also today that Simeon gives praise to God for the opportunity to see Jesus Let's pray and then we'll dig into today's scripture. Heavenly Father, I thank you again for the great time of worship we've had. I thank you for each and every person here this morning. Father, for our members, for their visitors, our guests who are here today. Father, I know you've already spoken in song this morning. And you've spoken to each of our hearts. And so, Father, we pray you continue to speak to us through your word today. Father, as always, get me out of the way. Nobody came to hear Scott talk this morning. They came to hear a word from you, and that's all that matters right now, Lord. So you get me, my thoughts, my opinions, my attitude out of the way, Lord, and you just fill me with you and let you come out of my mouth and nothing else. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So let's look at today's scripture, Luke chapter 2, uh, beginning in verse 25. Luke chapter 2, verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed, 26 is an important verse, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him, according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Oh, what joy it was to fill that Simeon's heart to see Jesus. Can you imagine how he must have been filled with such thankfulness and, 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 and such praise that God has kept his promise to him there as we read in verse 26 that God allowed him to see Jesus, to see the Savior. And we see that Simeon just began to overflow with thanksgiving and praise to the Lord for this experience. What a powerful thing that Simeon got to do. And we're going to take a look today, if you want to follow along with your outline and your bullets, we're going to take a look at four exciting things, four special things that were part of Simeon's song of praise, four special things that Simeon got to do. And the first one is this. Simeon held salvation in his arms. Simeon held salvation in his arms. Verse 28 says that Simeon took him up in his arms and blessed God. As I was studying this week, I wondered how many people did Mary allow to hold baby Jesus? Have you ever thought about that? I know mamas are pretty particular about who they pass their baby to to hold. And Mary was probably very particular about that, considering that she was holding the Son of God in her arms. So I wonder how many people got to hold baby Jesus. Surely Joseph held Jesus, probably Joseph's parents. Mary's parents got to hold Jesus. And here we read of Simeon having this amazing experience of holding Jesus in his arms. And make no mistake about it, Simeon knew exactly who he was holding. He knew who he was holding. We read in verse 26, 
God had promised him that he wouldn't die before he was able to see the Christ child. Imagine with me for a moment that you were at the temple that day. And you believe. You believe that that child Mary is carrying around, that that is the Son of God. And Mary turns to you and holds out baby Jesus for you to I'm take in your that. arms. I'm How would you respond? Would you take baby Jesus into your arms and look down into that sweet little baby face, into those deep eyes? Perhaps see a little smile come upon his face? Or would you be too scared to touch such a precious child? You no, know, really, each and every time we hear the name of Jesus, we're presented an opportunity to take and hold baby Jesus close, aren't we? We're given that opportunity to take Jesus into our hearts. Some people take him, some people refuse. Sin and they refuse. He praised God that he could hold Jesus near. You know, we're never going to have the opportunity to do what Simeon did. We're never going to be at the temple when Mary was there with baby Jesus. But God's word tells us that we can always hold Jesus near to our hearts. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. That's a pretty awesome verse considering what Simeon got to do. In a spiritual sense, you can hold Jesus close to your heart at all times. Amen? When you need to feel his love, just hold him close and he'll be so close to you. When you feel all alone and you need his comfort, just hold him close and he'll comfort you. When your anxiety is causing you to tremble in distress, hold him close and he'll give you peace. Oh, but he's no baby anymore. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. Yet we are told, we are given permission to draw close to him and he'll draw near to you. What a precious thought. So make sure to take some time this Christmas season, to draw near to Jesus. Draw near to the Lord. Spend some special time together, just you and him, and give him praise. It's possible because of Jesus. Simeon held Jesus in his arms. We can always hold Jesus close to our hearts, draw near to him, and he'll draw near to you. And we can do those things because of this. Jesus opened his arms. To draw you close to him as his outstretched arms were nailed to the cross of Calvary. And oh my, with those arms, Jesus said, this is how much I love you. This is why I came. This is why I was born a little baby. And he loves us that much. John 12, 32. Jesus said, and I, if, I, if and when I am lifted up from the earth on a cross, will, all, will draw all people to myself. Gentiles as well as Jews. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Jesus made it possible that all people would be drawn to him as he was lifted on the cross for everyone's sin. Simeon took baby Jesus and lifted him up and held him close to his chest because he believed. Those who didn't believe took Jesus and lifted him up on the cross. Because they didn't believe he was the son of God. And we have to make that choice. Will we believe? Or will we not? But when we believe that Jesus is the son of God. As Simeon did. And we draw him close. And we get in the presence of Jesus. Here's what we're going to experience. The same thing that Simeon did. The second thing we find that <coughs> Simeon felt. The prince of peace in his heart. Simeon felt the prince of peace in his heart. Verse 29, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. Simeon held, had seen Jesus. He had held him in his arms. He believed the word of God and saw the word of God fulfilled in his life, that he would see the Christ child before he died. And now Simeon could depart in peace because of the prince of peace. As a pastor, I've done many, many funerals. I've sat at the bedside with a family as their loved one moves from this life into eternity. I've sat with mothers as their child lay in a coffin. Take control in nearly every one of those experiences. No one wants to lose a loved one, but we all will, we all do. And at some point, we too will depart this life. 
But here's what makes the difference. Believing in Jesus as a sin in him. When you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then even in those hard times, you can feel the peace that believing in him brings to your life. Yeah. And Simeon said, I can now depart in peace. And I hope you can say with me this morning, when it's my time, I can depart in peace. You can say that if you placed your faith in Jesus as your Savior. Do you believe that he died on the cross to pay the price for your sin? Do you believe that he rose again? If so, then when your time comes, you can depart in peace. There's a great reason to worship. Amen. There's a great reason. You don't have to fear death as a child of God. You can go when it's your time in peace. Because Jesus wasn't just a little baby. He's the Son of God. He's the Prince of Peace. Just as Isaiah 9, 6 says he is. Isaiah 9, 6, you know it well. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And then Jesus himself tells us in John 14, 27, he tells us about his peace. He says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. When we believe in him, when we trust Jesus, when we believe like this, then we can truly experience the peace that Simeon felt in the verse. Phil Ephesians 4 7 says it like this The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and guard your minds through Jesus Christ. Simeon held Jesus in his arms, and Simeon felt the peace given by the Prince of Peace. And it's all because, because, thirdly this morning, Simeon saw the Savior with his eyes. Simeon saw the Savior with his eyes. Verse 30, Simeon says, for my eyes have seen your salvation. <coughs> because Simeon believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, the promised one of God, he also believed that this Christ would bring salvation to the world. And so Simeon declares, my eyes have seen your salvation. Listen, folks, Jesus is salvation. That's what he's talking about. When he says, My eyes have seen your salvation, he's talking about my eyes have seen Jesus. Salvation it is in no other, no other name is given other than the name of Jesus uh, by which we must be saved. Yeah. Oh, to see God's salvation. It calls Simeon to rejoice. And if you see the salvation of the Lord in your life, if you came to a point in your life when you said, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior, and you ask God to forgive you and save you, then in your life you saw the salvation of the Lord, amen? And you have a reason to rejoice today. Now, we may not physically hold Jesus in our arms, and we may not physically see Jesus with our eyes, but Titus 2 reminds us that salvation has, been, has appeared to all. Titus 2, 11 through 14 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. In other words, Jesus came to save you just as much as he came to save Simeon. Simeon saw Jesus. He saw salvation with his own eyes. And he believed. So you might be here this morning and you might be thinking, well, it was easier for Simeon to believe because he saw Jesus. Well, Jesus has something to say about that, actually. In John chapter 20, 29, Jesus says, Because you have seen me, you have believed. But then he talks about you and me. And he says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. That's you and me. We've not seen salvation with our eyes like Simeon has. We've not seen physically seen Jesus. But I've seen him spiritually, haven't you? I've seen him work in the hearts and lives of people. I've seen him working in my own life. I've seen Jesus. He's appeared to all men through his works of salvation. Blessed are those who've not seen and yet believe that you and me. And Simeon knew when he saw the salvation of God 
He knew that Jesus came for you and me just as well as he'd come for him. And though he was a Jew, Simeon makes a profound statement here that Jesus didn't just come for the Jews, but that he came for all. In verse 31 and 32, we see that Simeon speaks of God's all-inclusive love with his mouth. Simeon speaks of God's all-inclusive love with his mouth. Simeon's just said, my eyes have seen your salvation. And then he continues in verse 31, which you prepared before the face of all people. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. This salvation is prepared for all people, Simeon says. Red and yellow, black and white, they're all precious in God's sight. Verse 32 is a powerful verse coming from Simeon. He says that Jesus has come to bring revelation to the Gentiles. That's you and me. You see, if you're not a Jew, which I doubt anybody in here is, you might be. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. So don't miss this amazing statement. It changed the course of history forever. It's the new covenant of God that all might come to believe in Jesus. That all might come to salvation. You see, God is a whomsoever God. His mercy and His love have been extended to all, regardless their color, regardless their race, regardless their nationality. God is a whosoever God. And every one of you is a whosoever, and I'm a whosoever too. And I want you to think about that very worst person in the world that you can think of in your mind. That person's a whosoever too. The salvation of the Lord is for whosoever. Because God is an all-inclusive God. But there's another word that is tied to whosoever. Because God is also an exclusive God. The word is believe. Whosoever would believe. <coughs> You see, salvation is not just for whosoever, but it's for whosoever would believe. Salvation is exclusive to those who would believe in Jesus. In John 3, 16, you know it well. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes under righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made into salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there's no distinction between the Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then John 11, verses 25 and 26, Jesus said to her, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, yet shall he live. And Jesus says, and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Right. And then he asked a question, do you believe this? Ask that question that Jesus asked in verse 26 at every funeral I preach. Whosoever shall believe in the name of Jesus shall never die. Do you believe this? It's the most important question anyone will ever ask you in your lifetime. It's more important even than the question, will you marry me? It's more important than the question, what's your major, Allie? <laughs> It's more important than the question, what do you want for Christmas? It's the most important question that you'll ever be asked in this lifetime. The question is, do you believe? <coughs> do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe that he's the salvation? Do you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sin, but that he rose again on the third day, and that he's coming back again? Do you believe it? Do you? Close your eyes and bow your heads for a moment. Lord, we thank you for this message today. 
We thank you that you're an all-inclusive God, that your salvation is for whosoever. We thank you that we have this testimony in your word of sinning that gives us a stronger faith knowing that Simeon touched you. He touched the Son of God and held, him in his, held you in his arms. Simeon saw you with his eyes. He saw your salvation. Simeon felt you. He felt the peace that only you can give. Simeon spoke of your salvation that's available to all. And so each one of us in this sanctuary today have to ask ourselves the same question that you asked Jesus. Do we believe? Do we truly believe this? That whoever believes in you, though we may die, yet shall we live. And whoever lives and believes in you will never die. Do we believe this? Father, if there be someone in this place today who's never made that decision to believe, I pray today would be the day they decide. Today may be the day that the Holy Spirit convicts them of their need for a Savior. And they decide in their heart to believe. And if there be somebody in this place, give them the boldness to be saved today. All heads bow, bow and all eyes closed. I want to ask you this morning, do you believe? If you're here this morning and you've already made that decision in your life, You've already decided that Jesus is the Son of God, that He did die for your sin, that He did rise again. You believe that in your heart, but you raise your hand now. You've already made that decision. You know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you believe that. Thank you. Your hands are all over the place. Put your hands down. But this morning, with nobody looking around, if today is the day that you decided you're going to believe it, you know you need a Savior and you want to believe in Jesus today. Nobody looking around, but you just put your hand up right now wherever you are. Anybody make a decision that you want to believe in Jesus today? Just in case, I'm going to say a prayer. And today, if you want to trust Jesus as your Savior, I just want you in your heart to repeat after me. In your heart, just repeat these words. Dear Dear Lord, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe he came to earth and lived a sinless life. I believe he died on the cross to pay the price for my sin. And I believe he rose again. forgive me for my sin and come into my heart and save me. I'll live my life for you. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you can look up now. If you pray that prayer this morning, I'm going to be right here at the altar. If you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you can be saved. Just confess it with your mouth if you prayed it today. You just believe it. Would you come confess to this church that you chose Jesus today? I'll be right here. We'll come. We'll let the church know that you're walking out of this place and say you child of God. We'll rejoice with you. So let's all stand. Eyes in place this morning. If you need to make a decision, if you need to come. Or if you've already made that decision, you come and let me know. Let's sing it together. And come if you need to go. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart. Here's my heart, Lord. 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 Here's my heart, Lord.
You may be seated. Let me introduce somebody to you this morning. Abby, come on up here. This is this pretty little girl right here is Abby Schultz. And Abby's one of my fourth graders. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can do this crying. She is a precious girl, let me tell you. She's a precious girl at school all the time. And she's she's funny too. And so uh, we laugh together. Well, she makes fun of me sometimes, I think behind my back probably. <laughs> Abby decided this morning that she wanted to ask Jesus to come into her heart and save her. And, uh, she wanted to let you know that today, that Jesus is her Savior. Where are you going to go one day? Heaven, that's right. Amen. Heaven's her. Jesus is her Savior. Heaven's her home. So, amen. Now, Abby, I'm going to have you come back up here in a minute. You sit down with Mom and Dad and your brother. Uh, we're so glad Ashley and Chad and Dawson have been visiting with us too. And so we're blessed to have you all here and uh, being, being, being our guest the last few weeks. So in just a moment, I'll give you an opportunity to come and uh, welcome Abby, Abby to the family of God. And uh, she's kind of shy, so don't be too rough on her, okay? But she's, like I said, she's a precious girl. And we're so proud of you, Abby. Uh, looking forward to things coming up. Uh, this Wednesday evening, if you are able... You want to dress warm, but we're going to go out caroling. We have about 12 shut-ins that we would like to take a gift basket to and to go carol to. And so if we have three people here, that's a lot of visits to go make, and, and maybe we'll be doing it until midnight. So if you're able and would like to come and join us in caroling, we'll be here in the sanctuary at 6.30, and we're going to go take these gift baskets to our shut-ins who are not able to come and be with us on Sunday mornings. And so... Uh, well, with them. We're going to try to go visit 12 people. So that's a lot. So we need as many people as can help and that can be here. This Wednesday night at 6.30 is our, uh, is our uh, caroling and shut-in visitation time. Then next Sunday morning, as I already mentioned, our children are presenting their Christmas program. What's it called, Hannah? What's the program called? So uh, I know they've been working hard on it. I know it's going to be a special treat. So be sure to be here Sunday morning. And I'll share a quick word, a, a word from the Lord as well, Sunday morning. So be sure to be here, excuse me, Sunday morning for that special service. And then next Sunday night at 6 o'clock is our candlelight and communion service. And so that's always one of my favorite services of the year. And so we just read the Christmas story together as a church family and uh, sing some beautiful songs together and uh, take communion together as a church family. Special time. So I want you to put that on your calendar. Don't miss next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, our Christmas candlelight communion service. Also, you found in the pews this morning, uh, laying around your seats perhaps, the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Today is the official day we're taking the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. But if you weren't prepared to give today, we'll take that the rest of the month. And so if you want to take one of those envelopes with you, if you couldn't give today, and as a reminder to, to give generously next week. Remember, this offering goes to support missionaries all over the world uh, in places where the name of Jesus has never been spoken, perhaps, even. And so they're taking to Jesus where you and I can't go. And uh, so what an important offering that we would support these missionaries. So if you haven't given today, any time the rest of this month would be a, a great time to give. What else do I need to mention? Anybody? Am I forgetting anything? Yes. service next Sunday night. We're going to have a finger food fellowship, so bring your favorite, favorite finger food and we'll uh, share that together and share some fellowship as well. That'll be the last service we have before Christmas, so uh, that'll be a special time to be together as a church family. The Lottie Moon Christmas card box is back here, and so those have been divided, so there's a box back there with named folder dividers, so look for your cards in there. 
I know there were a lot of food in there this morning, so if you've got some, uh, if you've not checked your Christmas card box yet, you've probably got some back there. So check that after service as well. Anything else? All right. Well, God bless you. Have a great day. Be sure and congratulate Allie if you happen to see her after the service. Congratulating her from school. And, and uh, Abby and Ashley, and, I mean, uh, Heather and, 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 and Dawson and uh, your dad, Chad. I'm forgetting names. I'm terrible about that. Would you all come here and stand with me? And then after the service, uh, you guys come and you uh, just welcome Abby into the family of God and tell her how proud of her. Proud of her that you are for making the decision for the Lord today. I'll be at the back and uh, we'll uh, look forward to it. If I get to talk to you before the service, we'll look forward to talking to you as you leave today. Brother Robert, you just miss us in prayer, please.